What's up, everybody? Brett Mix, Mixer Madness here on YouTube for the next week of the Monday Night Wars. This is WCW side, week 44, August 5th, 1996. This is the 47th episode of Nitro, but the 44th week they go head-to-head. Nitro beats Raw for the eighth week in a row, this time by a score of 3.0 to 2.8. So through 44 weeks now, Nitro has 25 wins. WWF Raw has 17 and 2 draws. This is the Nitro with a 3.0 rating. Nitro begins with Pyro from Disney MGM Studios, where they've been for five weeks now from t- on TNT from Orlando, Florida. The first hour of Nitro is brought to you by the living legend Larry Zbysko and Tony Schiavone as the play-by-play man. Uh, they talk about being live and how it's the go-home show for Hog Wild at Sturges this Saturday night on pay-per-view. They talk about the attack last week by the NWO, by all the WCW, which brought all the ambulances and all the WCW stars, including Arn Anderson, Scotty Riggs, Rey Mysterio Jr., who was demasked or unmasked. Um, and a bunch of other WCW stars were taken to the ambulance, to, uh, by the ambulance to the hospital. The show begins with a daytime shot of the Disney MGM Studios with Pyro, and they welcome us to the telecast. Harlem Heat takes on Rock and Roll Express to begin this man, uh, t- man night for the Tag Team Championship. Sister Sherry's with Harlem Heat. They defend the titles against Ricky Morton and Robert Gibson. Harlem Heat's entrance song is so underrated. I think it's one of the best. I think it's the second best WCW song ever to the NWO's theme. Stevie Ray... Uh, it's pretty much like Booker T's theme, but I just think it was better with WCW. It just fit Harlem Heat, the team, more than it fit one guy, if that makes sense. Um, Stevie Ray started off with Ricky Morton of the Rock and Roll Express. Booker T tagged in from the get-go. Morton tried to go for the leg, but Booker was too strong and hammered back. Stevie Ray pulled at Morton, and he went for a shot at Stevie on the outside apron, allowing Booker T to hit a thrust kick. Then he clotheslined him down to the canvas on the inside after delivering a scissors kick to Morton. Stevie Ray tags in and has a camel clutch, and before another ta- uh, tags in Booker, who wears him down with a headlock. Sherry and Colonel Robert Parker were on the outside, distracting the, uh, Stevie Ray, almost rolled up by Morton at the time. Gibson with the hot tag and uh, drops both members of the uh, Harlem Heat. Uh, Robert Gibson in there tags in Morton who comes in then hits a sidewalk slam by Stevie Ray who gets back in control tags in Booker again who misses with an elbow but then hits a spinner Rooney and then a high thrust kick but only gets a two count Booker sidewalk slam he comes in and does a flying splash by Morton but he moved out of the way he rolls over Morton and then he taught eggs Gibson Gibson with a back body drop to Booker T and then a shot to the head and into Gary to Stevie Ray who's tagged in both men double drop both men of the Rock and Roll Express double drop kick Booker T and Stevie Ray. Sherry came in, but Gibson pushed her off. Uh, then the Colonel got involved and pushed to the outside. Booker T and Stevie Ray made sure they kept the titles by attacking a distracted Gibson for the pinfall. So Harlem Heat retained the tag titles at 825 going into Sturgis at Hog Wild. I gave the opening tag match two stars and a quarter. It was pretty good. The Nasty Boys say they don't stand where Hogan stands. Uh, after the match, or before the match, I should say, in a promo, the Nasty Boys are saying this, then Luger and Sting walk up and say they're going to make it their business tonight. After Sag says, we don't agree with Hogan but the, and, and the NWO, and they're not on their side, but he's not against them either because the Nasty Boys are being questioned. You're good friends with Hulk Hogan. How do you feel? Nasty Boys said, we're not on his side, but we're not against him either. So that's where the Nasty Boys stand. That's their the heels in WCW, so that makes sense. And, of course, their friendship with Hogan. A clip of Glacier Vignette, is, he's coming soon to WCW. Last two months or month or so, they've been showing this. Uh, Glacier, that he's coming to WCW. They made it seem like a big deal. I th- but you never know what gimmicks are going to work in wrestling. Whoever would have thought that a dead man, a zombie, would be one of the best characters ever. No one. Malia Hosaka was Sonny Ono. That being said, they come up with some pretty dumb gimmicks. T.L. Hopper... Red Rooster, etc. Malia Hosaka with Sunny Ono takes on Medusa. A women's match here. Uh, Medusa went for a suplex, but Hosaka landed on her feet. Uh, Malia Hosaka choked up Medusa on the middle rope down on the canvas as she bent backwards, but Hosaka put Medusa's head at the bottom of the rope in a lariat, just clotheslining her back into the ring, just the bottom rope right on the neck area, flings her back. Uh, USA chants rain out as she lets go a hold of, as she grape finds the ankle. Uh, she leans out and applies the leg lock, then choking her face to the canvas floor. Osaka is hit with punches, but Medusa breaks out, and then uh, 
Hosaka from the top rope with a takedown. Medusa hit Sunny Ono on the outside. Malia Hosaka caught her while distracted with a crossbody for the victory. So Mah- uh, Malia Hosaka wins at 439, p- uh, pitting Medusa. I rated it a star in three quarters. Next up, we got Chris Benoit, who comes through ring with women and Miss Elizabeth, taking on Alex Wright. They show a few weeks ago where Malenko hit Benoit with a briefcase, costing him a counter loss for Eddie Guerrero. And because Belenko faces Benoit this Sunday at Hog, this Saturday at Hog Wild, Alex Wright takes a bunch of shots to Benoit, a drop kick to the solar plexus. Benoit comes through off the ropes with a hard shoulder tackle, head scissors, drop kick, and another before putting Benoit into an armbar by Alex Wright, extra torquing the knees and the arm. Alex Wright crushes and burns in the corner as Benoit moves, a running knee by Benoit to Wright. Benoit still in control as Alex Wright. Uh, runs towards him but crashes into the corner a side suplex by Benoit to right Benoit with a headlock to right then Islam's spine first on the canvas then a pick up and a hot shot to Alex Wright Benoit then went for the knee but got cradled up by Alex Wright a leg grapevine with an abdominal stretch by Benoit arm drag takedown by Benoit Benoit drops the offense to Alex Wright with a snapmare out of nowhere Alex Wright scoop slams Benoit and then goes to the top for a flying leg drop. Woman and Malenko on the outside. Malenko gets a crossbody to the outside. Wright in the end wins by countout at 820 as Benoit once again is distracted by Malenko. And Benoit and Malenko brawl to the back. I gave the match two and a half stars. It went 820 as Benoit was counted out once again because of his arrival of Malenko. That they're going to meet Saturday night on pay-per-view at Hog Wild. A limo pulled up, and they questioned if it was the NWO. Randy Savage takes on Lord Stephen Regal next, and Lord Stephen Regal had some good offense, but Savage, and in the end, uh, puts him away with the elbow drop at 6 eight, 18. I rated it a two-star match. It was really aggressive. Both men brought it their all. Sting and Luger check in the limo uh, to see if, if it's, and they get flowers, and it says, your condolence is the death of WCW. So it was like a bouquet of flowers with uh, the death of WCW. Mean Gene interviews Randy Savage, who will set, who will get the first shot at the WCW title after Hog Wild. Macho Man says he will finish the job. Dig it. Macho says about the flowers that one of us should kick a field goal. So they set up the bouquet of flowers Sting does, and Macho Man kicks the flowers out of the ring. The Booty Man with the Booty Babe take on Ric Flair for the U.S. title. Uh, Flair low blows the booty man, but the ref didn't care for whatever reason. Heenan joins commentary, but no Bischoff for some unknown reason. Bischoff's not on commentary tonight, as hour two is already kicked off. The booty man wins by DQ at three minutes after uh, McMichael and Benoit attack, so the four horsemen uh, protect Flair. And uh, I give the match a star because the booty man and Ric Flair de- wrestled a decent three-minute match. Arn Anderson cuts a great promo on the NWO saying that if you get if you beat a horseman, you, you get sent with a bat, you better finish the job or you get sent to the morgue. Flair says, Hogan, you want attention? You got it. Flair attacks the booty man and says, you attack my best friend, I attack your best friend. Uh, they go to a break. They come back. And uh, Luger and Stinger in the production truck talking about mountain, pot pies and Mountain Dew, trying to rip on Nash, making sure they don't cut to NWO segment because they cut to a, the following announcement has been paid for by the New World Order. They had one of those They had one of those uh, vignettes, so Sting and Luger were in the production truck making sure they don't show any more of them. For not tonight, anyway. The Giant defends his world title against Sergeant Craig Pittman. He tried hard, but a Giant with the choke slam at 233 got the job done. In the main event, Lex Luger and Sting took on the Nasty Boys. Knobs and Sags with frequent tags in the ring. I'm not trying to rhyme. Knobs and Sags with frequent tags. They were in the corners of the ring. They just isolated their half, but Luger gets a hot tag and shoulder tackles both of them. Luger ran for the torture rack, but one of the other was Sags prevented it. Luger uh, Steiners were around ringside making sure the NWO didn't interfere and, and one of the Nasty Boys ran into a Steiner and he got occupied as, as Sting hit the Scorpion Deathlock to Sags and he taps out at 7.05. I gave the tag match two stars. So that does it for the match portion. Sting and Luger decided to the interview with Mean Gene to end the show to go to the limo to see if they're still there. But all they get is a note. The note reads, Ray was right. The NWO may have four or five men. So that makes a cliffhanger going into Hog Wild Saturday. Is the NWO going to have a fourth or fifth man? I rated the show a 6 out of 10. It beat Raw with a 3.0 to 2.8. And that's this week's Nitro. We'll see you on the next Nitro. Will the NWO have a fourth or fifth man by the time we get to the next week's Nitro? It'll be one night after Hog Wild. So stay tuned for that one. I'm Brett Mix, and I'm out.